This is a two-dimensional photo stress model of a load sensor that uh, Stress Tech had uh, built for refuse industry. This represents a cross-section of a front fork lifting device on a front loading vehicle. And the point of this model was to find out how close can we modify and put bolts to our sensing section uh, without damaging the uh, response and performance of the sensor. If I push down on it, as these are the types of strains we would see in the actual part doing to picking up a load. The first sensor that we built, we decided we didn't need to use photo stress because we thought we were smart enough about designing multiple flexure uh, load sensors. The first one we built when we pushed down on it, where we had the strain gauges, it actually went backwards. Uh, it took us a while to figure out that it wasn't that it was wired properly. We couldn't figure out why it was even going backwards. So we ended up making a photoelastic model. We learned a lot about the stress patterns, and consequently ended up with staggered uh, flexure lengths with certain holes to drive stress concentrations where we wanted to see them. Without photo stress, this part would have been virtually impossible to design to get the performance out of it. What we can see here is that when I'm pushing down on it, the force for the upper bolt is loading this direction. The force from the lower bolt is trying to drive into the structure. The middle bolt is essentially just along for the right. It's really not reacting any forces. So this is very easy to see in a model. Uh, it's easy to understand how the model's working. And this is one of the advantages of using photo stress. I'm going to use another cross section that is just a general representation of some holes in a plate. I'm just going to bend it. And you can see the strain patterns down the middle of the part. You'll see where it's black. That would be your neutral axis for bending or for extremely low stress. Opposite these two holes, you can see stress concentrations. So if you were trying to optimize this part to make a transducer out of it or to optimize it for fatigue life, it's pretty easy to see your stress concentrations. It's also easy to modify the shape of the holes by simply filing material away and looking at the new stress pattern. It's also easy to see if you're going to use strain gauges on this part, how big they could be, where they need to be located, and to what precision. You can see if you're going to try and measure next to the holes, you have quite a stress gradient on those outside surfaces, so you have to be very precise with your grid length and gauge location.